Cheers. And to my right is Kip. Mr. Perfect Kip Henning. And you're listening to the Scholar and Center show. I'm not that, even is that, going is to. That, is that what we are with the Scholar and Center show? Is that what this is? Scholar and Center. The Scholar and Center. That's it. That, that is what you're watching. The Scholar and the Center show. Right there. That, is that <laughs> That's why it's written behind us because I'm a bit slow and I don't remember a lot of things. Pretty snazzy little logo we got there, buddy. I did. Yes. And I got yeah. that on Fiverr. Fiverr. Fi- I didn't know what Fiverr was until you told me. Yeah. I learned that's, it from watching you. where I get a, um, a, uh, a small Ethiopian child who's good with um, Oh, small uh, Ethiopian art. child, huh? Yeah, so, who's, so who's good with artistic stuff that'll do stuff for like $12. More examples of you Europeans exploiting the continent. What continent? The continent is what I meant to say. Oh, of Ethiopia? Of Africa. I was just double you know, checking because I was waiting for you to say yes, and then I was going to tell you the Ethiopia is a country. country yeah, a yeah, continent. you know, you white folks like, you know, diamonds and... C- cocoa and oil and you just take that shit from wherever the fuck you can and you know prop up your economies with it well I get that from the Asian people at the market on the corner oh Chinese is there too now Chinese that's are in Africa too that's why I just too. said Asia a- oh, I see what you're doing there buddy yeah I see what you're doing yeah well, you ain't ready welcome 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 everyone it's good to see you well we can't see you but you can see us it's good to be seen right it's good to be had Remember I'm, that? I'm always seen you always seen yeah okay okay you're a pretty visible guy yeah so judging by the lighting sometimes i'm a little brighter than other times yeah sometimes you're a little brighter sometimes i'm a little shinier and sometimes i'm not so shiny but today i'm, I'm doing pretty good you, you would not make a good witness on the stand because you like hell is sweating the, oh yeah yeah they'd be like you lying your motherfucking ass yeah. off i'm like i wasn't even there I noticed you, well, especially when you're over there with a rag. Like, no, you're on. It's just really hot in here. <laughs> it's like it's 65 degrees in here, sir. Like, for real? Why does it feel like 95? Shit. <laughs> so let's just jump right in because I don't man. even want to placate and bullshit. Oh man, I don't really oh, want to talk about coronavirus or the epidemic or pandemic. Uh, yeah, I know. I just don't want to call it a pandemic because I don't really feel like it's a pandemic. Ah, uh, I mean, it's. So I, I feel I, like we're responding to fear. I feel like we're responding yeah. to to terror. People were terrorized and terrified and just so scared that I, we almost have to address it. But before as a we, pandemic, as, oh, so none of us have lived through a pandemic. What did you say? The first, the last pandemic was the Spanish flu, yeah, nineteen eighteen, yeah, that was hundred and two years ago. Yeah. All right. So there's nobody alive from the Spanish flu. There might be a couple of you it's, old motherfuckers It's uh, around. prevalent all over the whole, all over. Pandemic stand, the, the definition is prevalent over a whole country mm-hmm. or the world. All right. So technically, this is a pandemic. That fucking sucks. Right. Assuming. <laughs> Assuming. That all of the numbers are correct. Ooh, the, the, well, the, the verdict is still out. The jury is still deliberating on what this actual looks like, what this actually looks like when we're talking about COVID-19. Right. But... Huge butt. What is going on with our, I was going to say wonderful. What is going on with the president telling people? I don't know. Where do you start? Because what's been going on with him since 2016. Uh, so I don't, oh, oh, I don't know. Shit. I don't know what you're talking about. You know uh, what I mean? I'm talking about injecting disinfectant <laughs> as a remedy to the coronavirus. We're talking about using UV light beneath the skin. Listen, he said it in he said jest. It. He, you, I didn't mean in jest. I meant in space jest. Um, be, <laughs> good. <laughs> I don't know why I'm the one trying to trying to uh, half hearted and uh, trying to d- to defend Trump. Mm-hmm. I'm not really trying to defend him. I think he's a fucking moron. Um, that being said, I know the precursor to it. I know you saw some of the some of the news briefings when he said that. Now, mm-hmm. what I remember that was said prior to that, there was a scientist that was on the stage, right? And he said that approximately, uh, uh, basically. <clears throat> If the full life of the coronavirus on a uh, typical surface is about 24 hours, Mm -hmm. if you clean it with uh, bleach, then it lasts about half the time. So it has about a half life. And then if you uh, clean it with um, propyl... Isopropyl alcohol. That one. Yeah. Um, Isopropyl alcohol, then it it becomes uh, pretty much null and void within the matter of moments. Right. Um, And then there's a few other things, like I think like the Lysol and a few other things that uh, shorten the life even then to like an hour. But obviously the alcohol is the most uh, powerful one of all of them, cleaning it virtually instantly. Right. Uh, Or excuse me, killing it virtually instantly. I mean, bleach is also really, really powerful too, but... So, but the point is, yeah, turning ha- things white is always a powerful thing. Really, bleach. Yeah. 
<laughs> fucking, That's what it takes. It takes the color out of fucking things. Fucking guy. Can, can we get... Is there any way possible of us getting through an episode without you, you know, waving your white flag? Well, it probably was bleached flag. It was a bleached flag. I see what you did there, buddy. Yeah, because if it was... <laughs> if, listen, if it's devoid of all that color in the fabric, oh, you know, fabrics normally have color in them, even uh, if it's an off-white, right? Let me up when you know what this shit. Yeah, but if it's completely white, <laughs> it was probably bleached. Listen, all right. Did you hear him like recant and said I was being sarcastic? Well, I heard a few things. So right. number one, because he, he did hold a press conference, and said, "Hey, I didn't really mean for you motherfuckers out there to go out there and start drinking bleach and shit." Which I believe that I don't think he thought that people should go no. ahead. And, well, here's the deal. <laughs> I think that there are many, many times right. that he says things and he is devoid of one thing other than common sense. Um, and that is he has no internal monologue. I think he does have an internal See, monologue. See, for this show, I, I have a tendency does. to turn my internal monologue off. Mm -hmm. So I say whatever I want. Right. Squirrel. Squirrel. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. But I think that when, when uh, Chump the Trump is up there talking, mm -hmm. I think he literally says whatever the fuck pops into his head. So when he was talking mm -hmm. and he said, yeah, with well, the bleach and the the, the, the alcohol, mm -hmm. it's a good thing. If there was a way we could, uh, you know, in, inject it uh, into your uh, so, your bloodstream and then it would be very effective. And that was big. Because, hey, that was pretty fly. Yeah, Go give me a little bit more. <laughs> your bloodstream, a little effective. Go. Uh, you know, and then if there was a way for us to do the UV light, right. uh, because that obviously kills uh, germs as well. Yeah, well, UV light kills 99% of germs and viruses. Like my school right. is attempting to use UV lights to treat like real common areas like uh, like hand posts and doorknobs right. and so on and so forth. Right. Um, so your UV light is supposed to be effective. Right. That's not the point. I get it. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to give everybody mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity to follow the bouncy ball through the broken <laughs> stairs into this man's conscious no, see, and subconscious psyche. See, uh, I disagree, man. I think he does have an inner monologue. I think there's a little Cheeto-sized human that looks just like him living in his brain with pom-poms saying, you're saying the most amazing <coughs> shit. You just solved the world pandemic. And then he's going to tell you how great he was when he's done saying it. Didn't well, I just give you he, the wildest, he did say greatest the, shit he did I've did say ever? at the end of the sentence, mm -hmm. uh, more or less, if he right. knows what a sentence is, they have a tendency to run on. True. Um, but he did say, you know, he looked over at the scientists mm -hmm. and his medical community and said something to the effect of, uh, you know, we uh, we have to get on that. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. and and, and now, I get what he was saying. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now why I don't buy it. I'm going to tell you right now. There are two reasons why I don't buy it, because we're in a state where everyone in the country is looking for hope. Right. Sure. There are individuals. And these are the most hopeless shit. Yeah, ever. There, there are people at home that have individuals in the hospital that are on respirators that may not make it through this thing. Right. right. And this guy gets on TV and says, we need to inject some disinfectant. Oh, like so how like how he was saying if only we is it time for fucking jokes no 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 <laughs> it's not and i don't guy. think he was joking i think he's a goddamn liar when he came back and was like i was being, I was sarcastic. being sarcastic listen he has no idea what sarcasm is see, you know what else happens right is that some of you guys don't remember but this is the same dude that put forth the idea of dropping a nuclear bomb into a hurricane <laughs> so you're saying that wouldn't work? In... <laughs> the president of the United States, right? Fuck all the nuclear fallout and all the other shit, you know what I'm saying? But dropping a nuclear bomb into a hurricane to disperse the actual storm. What in the... Make America great again. Would it work? No. How do you know? Because... <laughs> How do you know, Kip? Look, that's some video game logic, okay? That is some comic book shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You, you remember Superman 2 when he flew a, a backwards and yeah, turned and spun the earth, everything backwards. And spun the earth backwards. Totally could happen. And, and Tom went. <laughs> totally could fucking happen. <laughs> yes, you're right. Totally. You don't know it couldn't Whatever. happen. You Look, know why? You know what I felt sorry for at that press conference? Is the doctor that had to sit there and listen to Fauci? that shit. Yeah. Oh, there was a lady there. She was sitting there and I was uh, looking Bri at her face like. What the hell's her name? That Bri poor lady had to listen to this motherfucker say inject some bleach. But we did have two people. There was a dude in Georgia right. who drank some disinfectant. Trump supporter. 
Yeah. Following his leader. Well, of course he's a Trump Do supporter. Do what his leader said. Yes. He said, my leader's going to make America great again and get rid of the pandemic. And oh shit, all I got to do is drink some Lysol. Problem solved. Well, but <laughs> they said that. What was the other medication that he was telling people oh, to take? Oh my goodness, I can't even remember that shit. Um, look, at, now you're going to have me yeah, look please, at this shit Please up. look it up. Duh. It was a drug, the malaria medicine. Yes. And it was supposed to be, you know, not done in human trials for the coronavirus. And yeah. what did they find out? That that shit is more deadly and detrimental to your health than the actual virus itself. Right. And and, and Trump was like, yo, let's just get it out to the people. Let's just get it out uh, to the people. Do hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine. Do you remember him saying, let's just get it out? And the doctor's like, hold up, we have to do this, put it through a clinical trial. Yeah. Can you imagine if... Would that make fear? him... I wonder if that would make him somewhat liable. I'm saying... He's the president. Liable doesn't matter. Well, listen, I don't. I mean, you can't be liable for stupid. What did what as did Trump great, has proven time and time what again? Did the great philosopher Forrest Gump say? And he was quoting his mother. Stupid is <laughs> as stupid as does. Stupid does. And in this case, it's like stupid is as stupid says. Like, man, look, it's it's very interesting because it's almost like he doesn't understand the power of his office with his work. I think he, he absolutely just says understands whatever that. the fuck he wants to say and now there's some dude in Kansas there was a guy in Georgia and a guy in Kansas and I personally I don't like the the views of the Trump supporters mm -hmm. and I don't have any like I don't but I don't want to see anybody be hurt right no I don't want to see somebody drink bleach and literally give themselves a burn on the inside of their body and then go to the hospital because they're they liquefied their organs or part of their you know bodies on the inside I don't want to see that I want to hear about that shit yeah but this fucking guy thinks it's cool to say some dumb shit when people are scared well <sighs> and and obviously I have a bunch of people that I follow that are conservatives mm -hmm. uh, and not only conservatives because you can't just lump conservatives in with Trump supporters. That's no, this, no that's longer the case. Um, but the Trump supporters and they're like, well, those people are stupid. And it's like, yes, they are stupid. And they are 100 percent Trump supporters Absolutely. because a non-Trump supporter would never do that. Not because they're any smarter. But because Trump said it, so they're definitely not going to yeah. do it. So, I mean, <laughs> I think that, like, doctors are liable for giving bad advice, right? They, your doctor can't just tell you, well, you know what, uh, just put some tussin on it and take a nap. You'll be all right. The doctor can't tell you some shit like that. The doctor has to actually right. give you uh, an opinion or an idea that has been measured and vetted. Right. Whereas our president just says whatever he wants. I just find it disgusting that this guy is speaking in these terms during a time of crisis or during a time where people are needy. Like, that's like yelling fire in a fucking theater. Bro, are you serious? America's on fire right now. And you're just gonna, oh, the, the America's a theater and there's a fire in there. You're just gonna right. scream it out, right? Fire, everybody runs out, right? Yeah, go drink some bleach, dumb motherfucker. Well, but he also <laughs> didn't yell fire originally. No, okay, good point, right? Originally, um, he said, no, they're bullshitting. Somebody just has a lighter. So, <laughs> no, there ain't no fire. There's a, but, we were slow to respond to the actual coronavirus uh, as a country, right? Yeah, um, as a country, as a government, as a not government, as a country, right? And I, you know, if you want to hear something like the science, the science just wasn't there. Like no one really knew. Like people are saying that we should have locked down the country earlier. Right. People are saying others are um are saying that. So the flu right. killed eighty thousand Americans last year right. during flu season, and so far, uh, the coronavirus. Supposedly, I feel like these numbers are inflated. That's my personal opinion. Supposedly, the coronavirus has 60,000 casualties, right? Right. So up well, until now. Not casualties. 60,000 deaths, right? Yeah. So up until now, the flu from last year has done more damage than the right, coronavirus but itself. But that's what a lot of people are arguing. And I always hear the argument is, how would you feel if it was your loved one or significant other right. that caught coronavirus and then ended up dying? You know what? I'd feel really fucking yeah, shitty. Yeah, that would be fucking horrible. I, I would feel horrible, and mm -hmm. I would have to deal with the with their untimely and, and tragic death, and I wouldn't be able to blame people who went to work. I wouldn't <laughs> be able to blame the neighbor because they didn't wear uh, a cotton mask with mm -hmm. no eye protection. I wouldn't be able to blame my governor because he either did open up the state or didn't open up the state right. because it's a fucking virus. Right. Nobody is blaming f the flu 
when you end up with pneumonia mm-hmm. from the flu and they don't blame pneumonia. Right. They don't say we have to eradicate pneumonia. They say shit. They, they passed away from complications from a flu mm-hmm. and, and caught pneumonia and they died. And it's a tragedy. But that's what it is. It's a fucking tragedy. Tragedy. But when it's 0.03 to 0.05 mm-hmm. of the overall population, right. I'm sorry. Are, are we looking to not have anybody die? So, Be, uh, you know what I mean? Like right. the, people are gonna fucking die. Right. And what did Trump, Trump said something to the effect of and people are dying like they've never died before? <laughs> that's usually how it works, man. Yeah, brother, that's that's usually, how death works. Right? Usually yeah, like, <laughs> they die like they've never, never died, died before, before because <laughs> they've never fucking uh, died before. Well now I maybe we're the slow ones. Maybe we're all the slow ones. But we're not the two sharpest tools in the shed. No. Nope. We're not the brightest bulbs in the light bulb. Well, yeah, see? You should, you should have stopped the tools in the I, shed. I was trying to show. Sharpest knife in the drawer. Sharpest, sharpest tool uh, in the Best shed. color in the crayon box. Yeah, yeah. Brightest color in the crayon I box? said best because I wanted it to allude to me being white. The white is the best color in the crayon. You just said it. I didn't. Have Kip you said ever, hey, the hey, best hey, color hey, y'all remember, was white. See, see, y'all remember that big box with the sharpener? Y'all remember that shit? Yeah. You couldn't use the white crayon for shit but black paper, so stop it. Why not? Oh, here we go. You know why? Because you can't see me. Oh. <laughs> what about what Dr. David Katz said? He was yeah. speaking yeah. about. David Katz was on Bill Maher's show last week. He was on Bill Maher's show. So yes. what and we're talking was, about is that there's no I just no want to set him up. And okay, then set, you him go. up set him up. Um, set him up. So the whole deal with, with Dr. Katz is uh, he was on Bill Maher's show this last weekend. Uh, I had uh, Kip watch the clip because mm. Kip had hit me to a few things about a few other doctors. He was volunteering in um, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is a, a doctor, uh, might be an epidemiologist, I'm not 100% sure, mm-hmm. but he has some uh, specific uh, medical background having to do with viruses. And, and infectious diseases. Infectious, right. that's what it was, infectious right. Communal diseases. Communal infectious diseases, right. the one that we get from communities and walking around exactly. and doing shit. He's an expert So he's not just an MD that happens to work in triage. Yeah. Uh, he's above and beyond that, and he donated his time. And right. he said... He said that the lockdown is having a detriment to our health into our immune systems because there is no cure for any viruses. Viruses don't get cured. The only way a virus is actually taken care of is through antibodies. That means that your body has to make the antibodies, which means if you stay away from the virus, you will not make antibodies, which means that when the coronavirus comes back again, if it's the same COVID-19, the shit that you were hiding from will eventually get you because you don't have the antibodies in your body. So it's it's a very interesting idea because- Well, he also said it's not a matter of of if you end up with coronavirus It's a not. matter of when. Right, because everybody's gonna get it. Right. He basically said, listen, coronavirus is in the background just chilling, mm-hmm. waiting. Kicking it. Not going nowhere. Nope. And once you slip up- It's gonna get your ass. Jump you. Yep. Like a gang of Mexicans in LA. A gang of Mexicans in LA. <laughs> Um, a gang of Mexicans in Texas. Oh, Puerto Mex- Ricans in New York. There's a bunch of Mexicans in Texas. Cubans though. in Florida. Holy shit! Dominicans in Miami. Getting your ass beat by some brown people. Okay, that I'll works. go with that. Yeah, that works. See, a little see, more PC. Yeah, be PC. It's I was trying less, to be geographically specific. <laughs> Thank you for that. that but that go was on, please. Very, please. very coronavirus. It's the corona, eh? The corona. <laughs> Holy, am I doing a show with this guy? Yeah. All right. You signed up for I this shit. I did sign up for this shit. But I, so what we're talking about is that originally the remedy that was given out to us was lock the country down, right? Let's, right. let's kind of hide away from this thing right. until, and by hiding away from it means that it presupposes that anybody that gets it is going to get better and then they won't be able to transmit it anymore, right? right. But the problem with that is, um, that is not dynamic enough, right. right? Because the the numbers are saying that 90 to 95 percent of the people that actually get the coronavirus have very mild to minimal symptoms, right? Right, asymptomatic, They're more a, or less. Either asymptomatic or very mildly symptomatic, right. right? So what we're talking about is a very specific, uh, like segment of our communities, mm-hmm. like the elderly or the people with like like intense asthma issues, right? These are the individuals any, that should any be, excessive pre-existing conditions, right? These are the individuals that should be quarantined, right? Because we don't do that shit with the flu. No, we don't. Nor we don't would do we ever. No, nor would we ever. But you have to understand, like, like remember we had the conversation. I said if I had the flu, 
I would uh, I probably think about not going to see my mom because right, you know, right. Well, just because you wouldn't want her to catch the flu, because you wouldn't want not to catch because the flu. she's even at high risk for death, right? But just because ah, you know, you wouldn't want her to catch the, the flu, flu, so you just so you'd wait right. a, a few days to a week or whatever. Absolutely. So the the point is, if let's say that you were a healthy, you know, thirty two year old, right? Nine times I, the 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 percentages of you dying for the coronavirus is uh, very, very low. Right. But you have a 32-year-old, let's say that you have a 95-year-old great-grandparent or grandparent that you're caring for. Now, that person is in that danger zone. Right. Well, then that means that that person's quarantining, then you have to be responsible. Does that mean that everybody else in the country has to be locked down? No, and that's where I get why we initially did it, mm -hmm. and I didn't necessarily disagree with it because mm -hmm. everybody was like, oh, shit, what the fuck is happening? Right. And when people went, listen, everybody just sit still. Chill. Stay where yeah. you at. Simple mandate. Let us figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then they should have came back and said, okay, this is what's going on. Right. This will be a more comprehensive way to dealing with this problem because this right. is. But by the time we get here, there's so much fear and so much disinformation. Well, right. And I agreed with Dr. Drew when he first came out and basically told the media to shut the hell up. Right. Because they didn't know what they were talking about. They were taking sound bites from everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you had, you know, Trump the Trump saying that, that it's, you know, a hoax. Right. And the, the Democrats put this whole thing together, which, by the way, if the oh. Democrats did this. I applaud you because you did a fucking amazing job. You couldn't win an election to save your fucking life. Not not your fucking life. You have Joe Biden uh, who Joe Biden. talks to curtains because he doesn't know where the fuck the camera is during debates. I'm pretty sure Joe Biden's not going to tell motherfuckers to drink bleach next year, though. I'm just no, saying. no, no. But not because he's smarter than that, just because he can't remember. Uh, hey, listen, you know what I mean? And by the way, Shots I'm, fired. Pew, I, pew, pew, he's not going to remember. Pew, pew. And when he does remember, he won't know which direction they came from. Yeah, You've seen this right. motherfucker trying to do the, the one time they had him on a debate or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. And the camera was there and he was talking. To the, here with it. Dude. He was talking to the curtain <laughs> and they were like, so uh, Joe, what we plan to do, Joe, Joe JB, oh, oh, JB. Yeah. So what we plan to do? <laughs> he was like, where are they at? Where are they at? Oh, they're over there. Yes. <laughs> My constituents. But the the whole thing is is you know the way that the thing was was released out into the open mm -hmm. was like fucking <laughs> hide your man oh. hide your <laughs> oh no you went there <laughs> and you know what that's a good because, because that it's viral coming. thing yeah the, uh, I don't even remember that damn uh, hide your what was it? I don't remember that dude. hide your wife right yeah. hide your hu I don't remember hide your she, husband hide, hide your wife. wife whatever she whatever dude said he yeah. you know he had a little but that's how they, that's how they treated us right they right. went listen all of us are gonna die mm -hmm. like now we're all gonna die so you should all go the fuck home it's a zombie apocalypse right and everybody buy all the toilet paper that you possibly can hoard toilet paper will save your fucking life yes. I swear to God zombies. It, toilet paper will save you from zombies. Yes, toilet paper, 110 percent, right. <laughs> and water bottles, and not water filters, bottles. not filters, not filters. No, don't get a fucking filter. No, you don't need that. No. You need water, water bottles. bottles. Yes, small ones, <laughs> ones that are hand sized. That the initial knee jerk reaction, yeah. was fear being dealt out to. You it's know, so the easy public. to sell fear. It's so easy. See, fear is such a. That's what we did with nine eleven. Capital, right? Yeah. It's such a like you can. Oh, it's always motivate, marketable. You can motivate motherfuckers to do anything if you scare the shit out of them, right? Yeah. But now the fear is out of the bottle. So what do we do? Like people it, start looking. But the problem is, is that we you can't interject or inject. Sorry, you can't inject logic when people are terrified. Like if a people like terror is is unreasonable. Like by right. definition, like if someone is is hysterical, you can't have sit down. Let me have a conversation with you, right? That shit doesn't work. Right. You know, you see in the movies when the person's like goes crazy, ah, ah, and then slap. Oh, yeah, I had to get myself together. <laughs> right? That's, that's usually what pull happens. yourself together, pull yourself man. Pull yourself together, slap, and then, then you right. have it, right? Well, but but Doctor Katz was also talking about. Mm -hmm. um, Bill Maher asked him about uh, Sweden because Sweden basically was like, "Hey, fuck it." Yeah, Sweden was like, "Fuck it, just go out there and get the shit." Um, yeah, like uh, you know, have a good time at the bar, right? And uh, hang out with your friends, right? And uh, you know, but but that quarantine when you get COVID. The presentation of that information is still flawed. Right. Sure. Because, because that's one extreme to the other. Yeah. Because that's like there's we can't just say, OK, we're going to lock down everything. And then we can't just say we're going to ignore everything because either one of those is folly. Right. What we're saying is that there had to be a, 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 a 
there had to be some type of resolution that falls right. in the middle that protects our at risk population and doesn't ruin our economy <laughs> in the same time. Uh, we're a little right? fucking late for that. Right. Because, like, we talked about this lightly uh, before about what is the economy going to look like once this thing is over, right? And yeah. um, I, I'm more afraid of the fear. Like, like parents are, some parents are going to be a little bit weary to send their children back to a campus where they know that there are, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other kids there, right? Like, some of these, think about, think about your mama that thought that Vicks Vapor Rub fixed everything. Or your yeah. grandma that thinks, just, just put some tussin on it, back to the put some tussin on it. That type of logic is predicated upon we can fix this, right? Right. And the the fear, like the bad guy is on the campus. So like it's going to be a very different landscape across the board. Yeah. Right? I, I agree with that. And some no. of you some of you know that. Remember when you were a kid and you could be dying. You could have a bone sticking out of your neck. Your mom was like, take your ass to school. Yeah, you better go to school. Mama, I'm not going. I can't read. You better take your ass to school. Like yeah. you went to school half dead. Like that thing is they gonna said, go away. They, our parents at that time said, you go to school mm -hmm. and let the nurse tell you. And you let the nurse go. right. But those days are now officially over, right? Like can't I don't want this anymore. little Jeremy motherfucker in my classroom looking at me like, hi, Mr. Thompson. I'm like, hey yo, hold on, man. You know what I need to do? I need to do is get some disinfectant. And have him drink that shit in the classroom. You, you're gonna go to jail for killing children. I'm just saying, the, the, the president said we could, though, didn't he? Okay, so um, <laughs> sorry. I no. I don't I don't know what the climate will look like. I can tell you that right now, I'm going through a lot of steps with one of my businesses mm -hmm. um, for the um, uh, payroll protection program, which is the mm -hmm. PPP program. Still waiting for that to come through. Mm -hmm. um, still waiting for SBA to step up with the loan processes that they're supposed to come through. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the two trillion dollars gone. Uh, two two trillion with a T. Two yeah. Oh yeah, gone. Tr Ghost. Trillion. <laughs> Done. Trillion. Like one night at the strip club. Two. Mm, you could lose a trillion dollars in the strip club. It's possible. I'm just saying. I've seen strip club is as big as United States, Troll. and there's a, and there's a gang of hoes. <laughs> America is a strip club. And there's a gang of hoes. <laughs> I see the bitches on Instagram all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great metaphor. I mean, think about it, right? Like, you know, this is just just as you come in, it's a neon sign that yeah. says strippers and hoes. Yo, yo, so I guess the like is like the dollar, huh? Basically. Like that bitch wants that like, you know, that bitch wants that you to tap and, that heart. And you know, and 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 uh Lady Liberty is for sale. For, she is for and sale. And that hoe has been picking up money off the stage. Off the floor. Yep. Off and, the, the champagne and, room. Well, mm -hmm. and, and the, the, ass crack. the whole deal right mm -hmm. now, so you saw a few of the headlines recently, was, um, <laughs> okay, so here's how it works, the way I understand it from my accountant, mm -hmm. is that there was a bunch of opportunities in the SBA for the disbursement of this $2 trillion, right? Okay. okay. And you had to apply for those opportunities. Obviously, the SBA cannot handle the influx of all of these applications, Right. right? So it was virtually impossible. So they did what, of course, everybody knew they would do, which was turn everything over to the banks, mm -hmm. right? You guys process, you guys do everything up to this point, then we will look at it after underwriting is done, and then we'll go ahead and disperse the funds to you. But each bank is able to put their own stipulations on Bro, what they consider you know, a viable application. I'm still hung up on the idea of two, tr oh, you said two trillion or one trillion? Two trillion. Two trillion. Well, to be honest with you, it wasn't Bro, that's even two trillion. Further than from here to the fucking sun. It, it was one point <laughs> five trillion. <laughs> and you know why it was one point five trillion? Uh, because part of the provisions of these um, of of these opportunities for mm -hmm. uh, money to be dispersed among the United States, both business and personal, was that approximately five hundred billion was to be earmarked mm -hmm. as. Uh, the um, uh, uh, Republicans saw fit, right? So, mm -hmm. for instance, the airlines, right? They were awarded. I say awarded. They were gifted. Mm -hmm. Okay, because all the this two trillion dollars is, is, grant is a grant. Is yeah, a grant money. You don't have to as pay long as you back. stick to the qualifications, mm -hmm. it's a grant. It means you do not have to pay it back. Right. So instead of them keeping the money, the cash on hand in order to keep them through these tough times because they knew they were going to come, but they didn't know this was going to be it. Mm -hmm. They were doing stock buybacks 
for all of their higher level executives and right. offering them as incentive programs. Of course. So now when the shit hit the fan, they didn't have the capital and the cash to keep everybody on. So of they course. said, if y'all don't give us the money, we're just going to go hard, go ahead and lay and, off 4,000, 10,000, however and, many people. And for everyone that was screaming socialism, right? Right. When everybody was screaming, oh, Joe Biden wants, not Joe Biden. Um, Bernie. Bernie Sanders wants, is a socialist. He's a communist, right? Like, if you get a grant from the government that you don't have to pay back, that means that you are paying your workers with government funds, which means the government is by proxy paying your workers. Right. Like socialism. Well, that, that's socialism. Like like I just I just get a, a little perturbed. Of course, about and, and I would too. Individuals picking and choosing where they want to, you know, throw but, these negative terms well, out. At. Both sides have done yeah. stupid. You know shit what like else that. is really wild, man? Two trillion is such a massive number. Two. Oh well, that was just the first trillion. round. You know they've allocated more. Uh, uh, listen, it, it makes it sound like if if they can just say, okay, we're just gonna allocate two trillion dollars for some shit, that our money yeah. really isn't worth anything. No, it's anyway. not actually because it's like, because they've like, had such. We'll a, just make more money. That's shit. what they did. That's what they <laughs> Print did. Print more bills, like our uh, money. Essentially, that's what they did. I mean, it's all done electronically now. But yeah. but what they did, and and so because they did that, it actually decreased the the value of of the American of our dollar, dollar right. the U.S. dollar. Two fucking. But trillion so dollars. with that five hundred billion, right? Mm -hmm. They said uh, we want to disperse this how we see fit. Mm -hmm. Give it to the companies that we de uh, deem needed. Necessary, okay, right. um, and we also don't necessarily want to account for it. Whoa. So you we, just we gonna, account for it. You just gonna go ahead and break us ah, off bro, this five hundred so billion, and if we choose to give ten billion dollars to uh, American Airlines, the Kip needs some new Jordans fund. We can do that, and we can't. And y'all don't need to say shit to us about it because we don't have to tell you how much it happened to be. Hmm. Now, on the flip side of that coin, there were a lot of companies, small business companies, okay, which is supposed mm -hmm. to be five hundred employees or less. Mm -hmm. That applied for a lot. Five hundred employees is a small business. Yeah. Oh shit. Um, that applied for these loans, mm -hmm. okay, across the country, mm -hmm. and there were major chains that somehow qualified for these loans. Mm -hmm. One of them being Ruth Chris. Right. Which uh, is, is the, to the best of my knowledge, has a lot more than five hundred employees. Yeah. They uh, qualified, I believe, for a twenty million dollar loan. Ooh. Now Shake Shack who has 189 restaurants, I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're over or under the 500 uh, marker. At but 189, they have to be over the 500. I mean, that's like if three people work there right. at the store. That's, well, I also don't know what they're yeah. counting as an employee, part-time, full-time. Yeah, okay. Um, Somebody on the payroll. I, I, there's probably, loopholes right. to everything. Welcome right. to government. Um, but And they were awarded a $10 million um, uh, uh, a grant. A loan or a grant, yeah. Grant. Uh, for forgivable loan is what they're calling a it. forgivable loan. Right now, two things. Number mm -hmm. one, I don't have a problem with either one of these companies applying right. because when they applied, all of the accountants and and people, the uh, you know the the money people in their companies said, listen, they're going to have these programs. I don't know what the restrictions are. I don't know what the qualifications are. I just know that as soon as they come out, we should absolutely apply for them. So that way, if we need it, right, we have it. Because like if you're looking at a national chain or any chain with over a hundred stores, ten million dollars may not be enough. Like you're in it multiple might just states. cover you for two months. Yeah, it might. Yeah, that's, that's you don't not know. a lot. You know. So I, mean? I don't have a problem with that. Right. The first thing I have a problem with is number one, you do a massive amount of banking for you mm -hmm. to apply for a very low interest SBA backed or endorsed or qualified loan to me seems to be the more responsible thing to do mm -hmm. because if you get $10 million at 2% or 3%, you're not paying very much for that money and your profit margin is already embedded in your business. Right. Mm -hmm. And number two, but at $10 million at 2% means you borrow 10, but you'll pay back 12. Right. At 2%, that'd be 20. No, you borrow. You pay two hundred thousand. Oh, you okay? You borrow. Yeah, my bad. So you borrow ten and you pay back ten point two. Yeah. That two, whoa, yo. Well, it's still good, right? That's and, great. And that's only assuming that you went to term. Yeah. Okay. That's if you great. paid it off early. Okay. So anyway, the point is, is that you should have been able to secure your own funding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Small business owners, legitimate small business owners, maybe don't run as much money through their banks. So they're lower on the totem pole, thus needing more help. Mm -hmm. So of course, when, when they 
they deferred to the banking system, or the excuse me, the banking industry to put out all this information. They said, okay, Bank of America, you go ahead and set your terms, right? This is what the qualifications are. Mm -hmm. Set it how you want to set it. And Bank mm -hmm. of America, for instance, said, if you uh, don't have a, an existing loan with us, right. you don't have an existing line of credit with us, or you don't have a business account, were, you don't, have you, any history. Not you don't you. qualify. Right. So go to the SBA, right. okay? Now, if you do have those things, sure, we'll process your application and see how far we can get you. Oh shit, look at the account. Listen, Shake Shack and Ruth Chris <laughs> just got $30 million. Yeah. We were gonna hook you up with that $100,000 or 250,000. is gone. Sorry but they took that. it. Yeah. Well, how the fuck did they get ahead of me? Well, it's the luck of the draw. I'm thinking bullshit. Yeah. They're running millions of dollars through your bank every year. If you right. think that there's not a, a bit of of uh, line cutting going of on, course. then you're out of your fucking yeah, mind. They're going to prioritize. Um, right. But, I mean, the bulk of our watchers and viewers are not small business owners. I'm just going to venture a guess. Right? Well, you, you but, I would think about it like this. There's 4 million people in L.A. Mm -hmm. approximately, right? Mm -hmm. And... If you would say that probably one fourth right would Quarter. probably have some sort of small business venture on their own right well see that's well, a million uh, people. That, that's well, so I'm, I'm I'm saying the bulk of our, our viewers are not small business owners but some of them are small business workers like you may not own the small restaurant or the mm -hmm. the the service like let's say there's a cleaning service that right. you work for but you work for that service or that you know so what happens is just because you don't own the business doesn't mean that you're not going to be adversely affected by the fact that your business owner may well, not be able to get a grant you can't get yeah. employed you, you can't get employed. Un unemployment because then what happens right because we were talking about mental health right yeah. because um there's a there's a huge so back to the coronavirus fuck man I know. it's 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 so hard to avoid talking about this because I'm, we're no, infected without being infected there's no sports <laughs> you know what i'm saying like there's this little shit there's little to nothing that we can talk about right. but we're talking about the the coronavirus itself like one of the one of the, the statistics that we were talking about we we're listening to in the car was that neighborhoods that are impoverished poverty is the biggest marker of like terrible health right right and the coronavirus is really deadly in areas where health is bad because poverty is bad right, right. um this is a very interesting point because if you are working for a small business and then that small business takes your job away then your mental health is in anguish right right well, what are you, how are you going to feed your family right right now you're feeding your family foods that are not good for them and then it kind of creates this cycle that creates like a petri dish for the virus to be detrimental in your neighborhood right that in it itself is is something that we can't avoid because a lot of these people have you seen these motherfuckers marching and acting like the quarantine is a you know, against their civil rights and shit, right? Well, no, no, I, wait. But, but my, my point okay. is, ninety percent of them are in suburban, manicured, lawned, protected, beautiful areas, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're like, we don't give a fuck about the inner city where you know, right? People are actually getting sick because they had pre pre existing conditions. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like, what the fuck are we really talking about here? Well, I think the people that are marching, I think that they. They have their finger on the pulse of what's going on, mm -hmm. but it's not that simple. No, it's not. You, you can't just say, well, you're violating our civil rights and then let that be that. Right. There is a greater good ideology that we need to adhere to. Right. You know what I mean? We need to do what's best for the greater good. Well, see, this is, once again, this is why the problem is super complicated, right? right? Because, uh, absolutely. There because, is no more clear cut uh, answer. Is, is, is the greater, it is best for the greater good because most of the people that are marching are not talking about, hey, they won't let me go to my favorite bar. Or, hey, I can't go to my, my restaurant and get my favorite fucking cheesecake or whatever these people are marching because they can't go to work right right these people are marching because their children are not in school right these right. are the things that are supposed to be you know rights of an american citizen and this is why they feel that they're yeah life civil liberty rights. and the pursuit of right. happiness this is why happiness. they feel like their civil rights are being infringed upon but and, and they are <laughs> But I don't know that you have a legal recourse because of the state of emergency right. of the United States. And if we were to go back to the idea of what we were talking about earlier, like a middle ground between 
because well, you know one of the doctors said we should be out there uh, creating antibodies. And that's a euphemism for saying we should be out there. The young people right. that are not in that danger zone should be out there getting infected with COVID nineteen right? without saying that directly. Now that doesn't yeah mean, he didn't say that directly. That, that doesn't did. mean go out and start licking fucking random doorknobs. Yeah, don't either. start licking toilet bowls and shit. You fucking uh, th- I can't. Mm. I don't want to even do that with mm. that. Listen, I, I want to move to coronavirus to um, coronavirus. Coronavirus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you had mentioned earlier mm-hmm. that the UFC was up to something. And oh, so yeah. I Fight looked Island. it up. Fight Island and is a real UFC thing. the UFC owner mm-hmm. announces he's buying a private island, even yes. though Dana White's not the owner. Mm-hmm. No, the, no, no, no. The Fertitta he's, Brothers. Yeah, the Fertitta Brothers. Um, but, but anyway, they're but Dana's they're the boss. He's the CEO. Yeah, he's CEO. But yeah. it says owner in the article. Right. Okay, anyway. Um, that they're buying a private island to stage fights during the coronavirus pandemic. Yes. Um, so Dana Fight White told island. TMZ that he's planning on moving them. And mm-hmm. he's planning on moving them because he can't get international fighters into the U.S. right now. That's true. That's true. And what that allows him to do is to kind of like, the reason why, you, yeah, you're right, because the borders are closed, right? Essentially. But tell me you're not thinking about like blood sport with John Claude. Hell Gardner. yeah. Or, or, or like it's a kumite and we're going to go to this private place and fight it out. To the, don't act like you didn't watch blood sport. Don't Hell yeah, I watched Bloodsport and Bolo uh, Young. I'm, I think I'm, I think we're dating ourselves. Oh, I've yeah. stayed dating myself. Yeah, yeah, but that's when they said. That's fight, all I've been dating since Island, this fucking pandemic I've happened. Got the scene in Mortal Kombat when they were fighting on the sand and the beach and shit. Like, I'm sorry, I'm I'm really 13 years old. So. Get over here. Get over here. So God, fight that Island movie was dope. so wonderfully terrible. That first movie was the Mortal Kombat. I, you know what's crazy? So. It's a little side note. I used to work at Blockbuster Video. Anybody remember Blockbuster Video? Nope. That Nobody was like my nope. first job ever. Guys, for those of you that don't know, it was like Netflix, but in a store. It was like Netflix, but in a store. It was like Redbox, but a building. That's what It's a hard was. concept for it's, people to understand. It's fucking difficult to understand. But so uh, the main character, the Asian guy, I don't remember his name. Uh, he used to come. He's, he lived in like Alhambra or something. Oh, right? his actual name? Uh, Arcadia. I don't remember dude's name, right? No, nobody cares. But he used to come to my blockbuster. And then when Mortal Kombat 2 came out, I was like, yo, man, I loved your movie. This is like 16 year old me. Mm-hmm. Right? Yo, if the new movie sucks, are you going to give me my money back? He was like, yeah, don't worry about it. That movie was so whack. He came in, what'd you think? I was like, you owe me $4. Because that's how much the movie ticket was, was like, when Kip saw it. Uh, it was like five. It was five like four, or four twenty-five like or something. Yeah, five, like for matinee, matinee yeah. used to be the cheap shit back in the day. Yeah, but mm-hmm. you know, dating ourselves. But yeah, yeah. So um, they're they're talking about basically moving it to a private island, mm-hmm. um, and they're going to start flying all the fighters there for international flights. So mm-hmm. as of April eighteenth. Um, the UFC will be back up and running now. Obviously, we're past the 18. Right. I wonder what that's going to do for the the how, the regulating bodies that checks for like steroids and stuff. Because um, in, well, in UFC 249 was supposed to be in New York City. Right, but that's because uh, there's a regulating body. What is the body called that checks? I know USADA is the one that test is that tests the athletes, but there are commissions that make sure. It's like, athletic commission. The athletic commissions are across the by state by state, right? Yeah. But if each it's an, if each it's athletic, athletic commission governs their own state. Right, but so it's New York State Athletic Commission. So what happens is that you have a guy that is like juiced out of his fucking brain who fights in Japan because their regulations are lax. I wonder what that's going to do for the UFC, right? Like, cause now we are fighting on an Island. You can actually have some of those. Fights. I would imagine Dana's is pretty hard on that type of shit. Mm-hmm. I know that firsthand mm-hmm, mm-hmm. cause me and Dana are like that. <laughs> like the pizza, like yeah, we're like this far apart. <laughs> um, no, but I've been around him when there were some fighters in question mm-hmm. that I was associated with, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they knew that they were going to test positive, right? And so I was in the room when they were having a uh, heart-to-heart conversation oh, with sure. a very, very, very well-known uh, coach, right? Um, that he had been training with, mm-hmm. and basically he was saying, if I fight and I test. Uh, Dana will completely ban me from the UFC. Oh shit, I'm gonna get um, fired. Right, completely. Yeah. Because it will have been my second, I think his second, second or offense. third time. Right. And uh, he said, so, but if I withdraw, they can't actually. Oh, they can't fire me because I didn't fight. I didn't compete. Right. Oh, that makes sense. So he came up yeah. with another because excuse. One of the things that, that, that makes it really cool about Fight Island, we're calling it Fight Island, right? Yeah. Is that there are, there are fighters overseas that are excellent. 
but because they're not in the UFC and they don't come to the United States, we never get those super fights between like our champion and the champion in Ryzen or the champion of one. There's another company called One Champion. We don't get those fights right. because the, these, these people are international. But if we can just get everybody to fight Island, we can just let them scrap it out. That would be so, pretty dope. So this would basically be like uh, the Bruce Lee movie. The, it's, it's, oh, into the Dragon. Let's go. Get everybody in there and have them just fight it out and let's really see who's the, who the man is. I think they should bring back the open weight tournaments. No way. Back in the day, in the Pride days, when you'd have like a 155 pound dude fighting big ass 260. That was the original UFC. I'm just saying that shit was entertaining. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. And it's not a fair contest. It, it doesn't put fair. This is not about fair. This is about spectacle. Everybody wants to you see a car You stop at car accidents, don't you see? Yes, everybody wants to You're see a fucking car. asshole. I am the You're asshole. the reason why there's traffic in LA. I'm the reason? Yeah. Motherfuckers need to learn how to drive. Because you fucking rubberneckers, dude. If Always you don't want just me drive. to watch it, if you don't want me to look at it, then you don't have the accident? Yes. That's why it's called an accident. It's inherently hey, hey. Uh, unforeseen. Uh, you can't foresee that. True. You're right. But back to my original point. You don't remember that shit? Because listen, listen, uh, well, Vitor Belfort was like 185 pounds, maybe 205 pounds. Uh, uh, these guys were little, beating the shit out of these big, massive 250 pound dudes. Who, who what little dude was beating the shit out of Vitor? Me, no, no, Vitor was beating the shit out of a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. He was. When Vitor first came in the UFC, he was a young buck yeah, he was and like he was breaking everybody yeah, he off. He was like 19 years Tank old. Tank Abbott, all of them. Tank was all of 265 pounds. Yeah, yeah. and Vitor lit Vitor him up like ass. a Christmas tree. See, that shit is exciting, no? No? All right, I, No, I'd rather see the, the weight classes. I, I just want to see the open weight tournament. That shit was dope. Uh, I would rather stick with the weight classes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to some sports and I don't even, I mean, I like combat sports, but at this point right. I'll watch Take aggressive yeah. fucking croquet yeah. if they I have think, it. I think the NFL is going to have a huge season this year. I think the NFL, because the NFL is a, or, or even college football, by the time football comes around, people would have been so hungry. Like ESPN is fucking hilarious. Speaking of ESPN, have you seen the Jordan documentary? No. Oh. All right, so send me the link. Yeah, one of the things that's really, really important uh, about Michael Jordan is how intensely competitive he is. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost like if you had a psychopath, right, a serial killer, okay. and you asked him a bunch of questions about killing people, he'd be like, "Yeah, I killed him. That's what I do." <laughs> it's like okay. that's how Michael Jordan is about being competitive. This shit is wild. Like, it's like a, it's like a whole other level. It's almost like in order to be great, you have to be. That like a little committed bit psychotic, and that big, yeah, a little bit crazy about you know what it is that you're doing. Like there was a there's a clip when he was in college, he ran like four seven four eight and forty, which is you know okay, it's not it's blazing speed, it's you know it's, it's all right. right. And then he worked and worked and worked and got his four eight down to a four three. Now four three is moving. It's crazy. Fast. Four three is moving. Yeah, I, I like, ran I ran a four five. I ran four four. But I ran a four four three nine. I didn't run that fast though. No, I ran a four or five. <laughs> <laughs> but those, I mean, what I'm saying is like, like watching that level of competition or that level of commitment to being great is something amazing because it always brings up the LeBron James question. Like who is truly the greatest basketball player in the history of the NBA, right? I, I don't know. They don't fight enough in basketball. They don't fight that enough in basketball. See, ah, that got it. Well, I digress. The, uh, I think any time that, that another player goes, ah, foul. <laughs> pretty fucking. Ugh. Really? Like, dude, why'd you foul me? Hey, listen, like, what you the know, fuck, man? You know, why that, you know why that doesn't count? Because back in the day, in the early days of the UFC, they had groin strikes. Mm -hmm. You could punch somebody in the balls. Now. Yeah, but you're also allowed to wear cups. Yeah, but you've been hitting the balls with a cup before, haven't you? Yeah, it hurts like a bitch. Yeah, it doesn't tickle. It doesn't. It's, it's no, but you're also able to fish hook and eye gouge and everything else. Fish hook and, and eye gouge. And they just basically said that's unsportsmanlike. I'm just saying, I prefer combat sports. I'm not saying the basketball players should be fighting. It looks, but they would look pretty um, girly. What if you take an elite athlete, like a basketball player, right? Yeah. Someone, or a football player. Let's say you get an NFL wide receiver that is. 215, mm -hmm. like 5% body fat. He's got all these physical tools, elite, Olympic yeah. level athlete, and have that kid trained fighting yeah. from two years old. Who is that kid gonna be? Right? Because um, a lot of times. Probably Jim Jones. 
uh, John Jones. I mean, I put it, yeah, because John no, I Jones. Said Jim got, Jones. You said Jim. Who the fuck is Jim Jones? The dude that killed all the motherfuckers in Guyana? Dude no. with the Kool Aid? <laughs> or the rapper from New York? Yeah, like Jim rapper Jones. from New York. Yeah, I couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> we fly. Yeah, right? It's Jim Jones, bro. All right. Um, yeah, like, yeah, John Jones has two brothers that plays in the NFL. Yeah. But if you could take. You know some of these Olympic sprinters and teach them to fight since they were uh, running. That a lot of countries special. have done that with their Olympic athletes. Yeah, that's true. They place them where they think right. they're going to be. Yoel Romero was in Cuba doing wrestling. He was oh you know, Cuba, huh? Yeah, Cuba. That's now all of a sudden, Cuba. fucking that's the way it's pronounced. Bilingual, huh? No, that's not bilingual. That's, I'm sorry, Cuba. Feel better, white man? Yeah, of course you do. I do. I can't put up with him too much longer. Well, listen, well, you guys, motherfucker. Yo, we are sorry to continuously run over uh, this coronavirus thing. Yeah, but it's still here. So we're still, still, still here. here. So we're still so here. So fuck it. And as long as the president keeps saying dumb shit like sip on some sip on a Lysol cocktail, I'm going to laugh at his fucking ass. I wonder if he sits in ultraviolet lighting. He probably shoved it up his ass and illuminated it thinking that it would keep him from getting the he coronavirus. He got so mad when they said that he sits in bed and eats hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> and gets his news yeah. all from Fox and yeah. and then complains about CNN afterwards. Yeah. And and the the what? scariest part about this guy is yeah. that he's going to get reelected. What a fuck boy. <sighs> well, on that note, yeah, we hope you guys are figuring out how to, you well, know, once, deal with this thing Yeah, by once again, I'm Derek Pierce. I'm Kip. Who were you today? Oh shit, hold on a second. Wow, he didn't even remember. I lost. I'm Mr. Perfect Kip Henning. I don't think you're allowed to do it now because you forgot who the fuck you were. Fuck, man. I'm going to spit the gum out. Listen, we appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching the replays. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, if you have a friend, tell a friend so we can all be friends. Yeah. Tell your friends to get with my friends so we, we can, can be, be friends. friends. That's what Biggie said. Uh -huh. Love. <laughs>